nice to see you. What can I do for you today? Hi, can you check my availability for tomorrow 9 a.m.? Give me a moment. One moment. You are fully available tomorrow, June 7th, 2025. The 9 a.m. slot is free. Would you like to book a meeting at that time? Uh, yes, please book a meeting at 9 a.m. Just a sec. Could you please provide the email address of the attendees for the meeting? Yeah, the email address is john at example.com. Just a sec. The meeting with john at example.com has been successfully booked for tomorrow, June 7th, 2025, from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. Is there anything else you would like to do? Actually, I don't think I can make it. Can you... Move it to 1 p.m. instead. I will reschedule your meeting with John to 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. on June 7th, 2025. This will just take a sec. One moment. To reschedule the meeting, I need to delete the current event and create a new one at 1 p.m. I will do that now. This will just take a sec. The meeting with John has been moved to 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. on June 7th, 2025. Here's the updated event link. Uh, can you uh, probably delete this meeting? I'm not going to make it. I will delete the meeting with John scheduled for June 7th, 2025 from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. Just a moment. The meeting with John on June 7th, 2025 from 1 p.m. to 2 p.m. has been deleted. Is there anything else I can assist you with? No, thank you so much. You're welcome. If you need any more help with your calendar or anything else, feel free to ask. Have a great day. So what you just saw was me doing all the calendar actions like get availability, create an event, update an event, and delete an event without having to use complicated setups and by just using this simple MCP trigger. And for those who have been long enough in the voice AI industry, know that, that even to do a simple task like creating an event, we had to go through very complicated setups in make.com, which used to look something like this. So this was what we had to do just to get the availability check inside a link calendar. And then this is what we had to do to actually create a booking event on call using a voice AI caller. But now with MCP, all that is reduced to just one MCP server trigger and having all these tools which can communicate with MCP trigger and send out the relevant info to our voice AI agent. Isn't that amazing? And this is the practical use of the MCP that I'm going to explain to all of you in this video. So let's see how MCP actually works in real life. So first of all, let me just explain what MCP is in a very basic fundamental way. So before MCP, if we had to connect any service with our LLM or any agent, we had to pass parameters for their respective unique APIs. For example, if we had to connect Slack, we had to use the Slack API. If we had to connect uh, Google Drive or GitHub, we had to use their unique APIs. Now with the introduction of MCP, all these separate requests can be just one unified API request. And the MCP protocol is going to handle all of these things under the hood. Which means you don't have to format your data according to what each of those APIs expect because all of them might have different parameters that they would accept. All of that would be handled by the MCP protocol. And the only thing you need to do is to just send the API request to the MCP server and let the MCP handle the rest of the things under the hood. This unlocks a lot of possibilities and this also gives you the power to make simple automations but making it very powerful at the same time. And like you just saw, we could do all of those different things with Google Calendar using just this simple MCP trigger which we had to do with complicated setups before the introduction of MCP. Now, if that is clear, let me take you to how to actually create an MCP server and then how would you link it to your VAPI account? Okay, so to start with, you can just sign up for N8N and simply create a new automation. 
And now once that is done, what you need to do is to press tab and select MCP right here and select MCP server trigger. Okay, so this will give you two URLs. One is a test URL and one is a production URL. I'll tell you how to use this in a while. So once this is done, now we have to connect tools that will get triggered when the WAPI workflow calls this particular URL of this MCP trigger. Okay, so for that, click on the plus button on the tools and here search for calendar, right? And in here you will see Google Calendar tool. And first of all, you'll need to add your credentials using Google Auth API, right? So here you can just sign in with Google and it will automatically create your credentials. In case you are having trouble, just have a look at this video, which I have also made on this particular topic. I'll also give the link of this video in the description below. So once this is done, now follow the steps exactly as I'm doing. So tool descriptions, so you'll set tool description to set automatically. Resource is event, operation is create, and you have to select your calendar. So in my case, I'll choose this one. Now here I'll select, let the model define the start time and let the model define the end time as well. Now here I'll have to add one more field which is the attendee because that's where the email of the person who is going to make your meeting will get populated so here also i'll select uh, define automatically by the model and then i'll just click outside it and now i have created a node which will help me create an event so maybe i'll also rename this to cal event right just so that i'm not confused whenever i'm seeing so many similar looking tools inside one MCP trigger. Now we have to add three more tools for our Google Calendar. One is update, one is get, and one is delete. So again, we'll go here and we'll search for calendar. And for this, we'll need to change from create to get. And from the list, we'll select our calendar event ID by default, and that's it. So we'll set this up as get call events. So this is the get event. Now we'll add for the update event, right? So we'll go to calendar and here we will select for update and again, select our calendar event ID automatically populated. It should also be automatically populated. And I don't think there is any other thing that you have to do it in this node right now. So this is also done. This was the update. So we'll rename it to gcal update this is done and now the last one remains is the delete node so we'll go here again go to calendar and now we'll select delete and select the calendar event id automatically and that's it that's all you need to create an mcp server trigger now i'll tell you how to link this up with your wapi bot so that it can communicate and do all these changes which you just saw me doing in the starting of the video. So for that, let's jump into our WAPI dashboard. This is my WAPI dashboard and in here, you have to go to tools and you have to create an MCP tool like this. And the only thing you need to put inside this tool is this server URL, which you will get from right here. Select this and make sure you are pasting a production URL, not a test one, right? So I'll copy this and I'll paste it right here and I'll save it. And that's all. That's everything you need to do to create the MCP2. Isn't it amazing? And before linking it up with our uh, agent, we'll just quickly test it. So if I hit list MCP tools, it should list all of these four tools that are available if everything is working correctly. So I will list it up right here. And we should have a success message, which we have. So we have a status 200 and we have delete, update, create and get, which is all what we have, delete, get, update and create, right? So we know that this tool is now linked up, everything is working. Now we go to our agents or assistants and now the only thing that you need to do is to, and just write whatever prompt you want to use in your particular use case. In this one, for this demo, I have used this prompt uh, and these combinations of uh, LLM and voices. I'll just show you everything. So this is what I have used. Now the important part is in the tools section, you have to select the MCP tool 
and add it to your agent. Otherwise, it won't know what to call. And in the prompt, you can also say that trigger MCP tool for all the tasks that are related to meetings and bookings, right? And you can just publish it. And maybe I can quickly test out with a chat. So let's say I'll say, can you ch check if tomorrow 10 a.m. slot is available? Okay, it's going to call the MCP tool. Yes, and let me see the executions. All right, so it just called the MCP tool right here. And it executed the get event, which is what we wanted from this query, right? So let's say I ask it another free slot. Uh, what about 2 p.m.? Right? So it says 2 p.m. slot is also available, which is correct. Let me show you how my calendar looks like. Did I ask today or tomorrow? Tomorrow. Okay. So tomorrow I am all free. And it is telling me that by referencing to our MCP tool. Right. So now let's say book a meeting at 10 a.m. My name is Rish. Email is Rish at Campbell.com. Okay. Let's see if it does the work. Okay. Meeting has been booked. Let's see the calendar first. Meeting is right here. And this is my email. And let's see what calls have been made to the MCP and a create event call was made to the MCP and with all of these details, which is wonderful, which is exactly what we want. So this is how you use a single MCP trigger to do all of the complex tasks in Google Calendar for which you would have otherwise required to have complicated automations set up. And not just Google Calendar, you can have a lot more tools and communicate with all of them just by a simple MCP node figure. For example, if I go back here and I can add a tool which is let's say Airtable, right? I can read any record and do manipulations in that. I can use any other tool, let's say Discord, right? I can do this. So you can have n number of tools and only have one server trigger and let the LLM decide what it wants to do while calling them. And the best part is it will also take into account the structured data that every single of these tool accepts and gives out responses in. So I hope you found this useful and I made this one because I have not seen a lot of real use cases of MCP triggers out there. So I hope this was helpful and I can't wait to see what automations you make now because making them has just gotten a lot more simpler. That's it for today. Make sure to like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one.